Hello, welcome to Einstein Mechanics and today we are looking at the general introduction and basic concept of thermodynamics. Very interesting. Remember in this episode we are going to tackle thermodynamics which is one of the key course we need as engineers. It's very interesting. So our objectives, we are looking at thermodynamics through the precise definition of basic concepts in this episode, everything we are going to talk about is the basic concept, the ideas, the knowledge we need so that we can understand thermodynamics perfectly. We will also review the metric SI unit system that will be used. And since we are dealing with basic concepts, we will explain what a system, a state, we will talk about the state postulate, equilibrium, process, and cycle. We also talk about the gas law. It's very interesting. So these are the objectives for our course. Thermodynamics is defined as the science of energy. Very interesting. The science of energy. So basically, thermodynamics is what? Energy. We are going to talk about energy and what? Energy changes. You love it. It's very interesting energy and energy changes. But how do we get the word thermodynamics? It was originated from the Greek words thermi or term, which means heat, and dynamics, which means power. So in general, we can say what? Heat, power. Because most of our analysis will base on power of heat or heat power, we are interested in what? That. Are we good? So we now know that thermodynamics was originated from what? Heat power. So thermodynamics include all aspects of energy and energy transformations. So energy, any form of energy, being it heat, we call it thermal energy, being it what? Potential energy, being it what? Kinetic energy. Thermodynamics is going to talk about everything. And energy transformation. How do we transfer a heat energy to a chemical energy to anything? So stay with us in this course and you understand everything. It's going to talk of energy transformation and we will see how interesting it is, how we will use heat to do our work very easily. It's by the help of what? Thermodynamics. One of the most fundamental laws of nature is the conservation of what? Energy principle. It simply states that during an interaction, energy can change from one form to another. Are we good? So we already know about the conservation of energy principle, which states that energy cannot be created nor what? Destroyed, but can change from one form to the other. How do we see this in practical? How does energy change form? It's very practical. We mostly change forms of what? Energy we eat to get energy to do work. Most of the time we do everything using what heat. We do things using steam. In our, on our engineering field, we use steam to what? Do most of our work. And throughout this thermodynamics course, we will see how this is going to what? Help us. Let's look at this. A rock falling off a cliff. This is a rock. It is falling off what? A cliff. It picks up speed as a result of its potential energy being converted to what? Kinetic energy. And energy cannot be created nor what? Destroyed. It can only change form. Let's look at this. Initial, what was the potential energy? PE of so at first stage the potential energy was what 10 units pay attention and the kinetic energy was what zero what is potential energy the energy possessed by a body by what virtue of which what position so as at this position of stage one the rock had a PE of what 10 units. And what is kinetic energy? Energy possessed by a body 
by virtue of its what? Movement. So we saw a zero kinetic energy at stage one, meaning this rock is not moving. There's no movement. There's no energy for movement. Are we good? Then it increased its kinetic energy from zero to three. So we saw a movement. There's what? A movement downwards. And the potential energy also reduced from 10 to 7. What is the total energy at state 1? 10 plus 0, which was what? 10. At state 2, the total energy is 7 plus 3, which is also what? 10. So is there any loss of energy? No. Energy, energy is just converted from what? One form, which is potential energy to kinetic energy, which obeys the law of what? Conservation of energy. That energy can never be created nor destroyed. So looking at the kinetic energy, that increased from 0 to 3 here. We did not create it. It was just transferred from one form of energy, which was the potential energy, to the kinetic energy. Are we good? So basically what we are trying to say is that never assume energy is created or never assume since it moves from the potential energy moves from 10 to 7 the 3 is wasted no it is converted to other form of what energy and here kinetic which helps what the movement of the cliff isn't it interesting so since we are looking at fundamentals and the basic concept we will be running fast throughout this episode and we will be explaining the fundamentals. The major laws in thermodynamics, we have two main major laws. And the first law of thermodynamics is simply an expression of the conservation of what energy principle. So if you are asked to state the first law of thermodynamics is the law for conservation of energy. And we already know that it states that energy cannot be what created or destroyed but can be changed from one form to what the other that's the first law of what thermodynamics and it's as said that energy is a thermodynamic what property we will look at what a thermodynamic property is the second law of thermodynamics is very interesting here it also asserts that energy has quality as well as what quantity and actual processes occur in the direction of decreasing quality of energy. What does quality of energy mean? Quality of energy is simply talking about the ease with which energy can be what, converted to a useful what, work done or useful work. If I have energy and I cannot utilize it, then what is the point of the energy? So the second law is trying to tell us that energy has quality, meaning we can convert it to what? A useful work. That's what it means. And it's true. Any form of energy we have can be converted to a useful work. Being a thermal, we know, we will see the applications of energy and we see that, yes, heat energy is what helping us a lot. We have a useful use of what? Chemical energy, potential energy, kinetic energy, they are all what? Having a quality, they have their useful what? Way of what? Helping us do work. And it has quantity. For quantity, the amount, the quantity of what? Energy. From the previous slide, we saw that the potential energy at first stage was what? 10 units. That's a quantity. The kinetic energy was zero, zero quantity. At state two, the potential energy increased to what or decreased to seven. It now has what a quantity of seven, and the kinetic energy got to three. So these are what the quantity. So the second law is very simple, telling us that energy can be used for work, and it also has what a quantity at a particular point. Let's look at one scenario here. A cup of hot coffee left on a table eventually cools, but a cup of hot or cool coffee in the same room never gets hot by itself. Why? So, like this. This is the second law. We have a cup of hot coffee. The temperature is 70 degrees Celsius. 
and this is the environment it's a cool environment at a temperature of what 20 degrees celsius what we are trying to say is that why is it that the heat is trying to come out from the cup it's coming up from the cup why doesn't it stay and what we are saying is that always energy moves from what one point to the other that can be converted but here is due to difference in what temperature 70 and what 20 so it will try to compensate for the lower energy at the environment are we good so anytime energy meets it try to what compensate for differences in what temperature so heat flows in the direction of what decreasing temperature and bear in mind that the energy change here is what heat energy heat energy one of the properties of heat energy is that it always flows in the direction of what decreasing temperature temperature so heat will never flow from this 20 degrees environment back into the cup of what 70 it will always move from a higher region towards a lower region are we good that's why if we leave this hot coffee for a while we will come back and meet the temperature will decrease but if this same cup has a coffee of what 20 degrees it will never get what hot because the temperature of 20 degrees celsius is what in equilibrium with the atmospheric what or the environment temperature and there will not be any heat exchange hope you are good so we should bear in mind as we are going to do our analysis we always know that heat energy what moves due to what temperature differences temperature differences all right let's look at it so the study of thermodynamics can be classified as what classical thermodynamics and statistical what thermodynamics so let's look at the difference because we have to tackle one side of it when we talk about classical thermodynamics it uses macroscopic approach to study thermodynamics where does not require knowledge of individual particles to determine the property of a body it's very simple here it is usually based on experimental observation it provides a direct and easy way to the solution of what engineering problems are we good so classical thermodynamics in simple terms means if i am studying a property let's say this cup if i'm studying then if i'm using the classical thermodynamic way i'm not going to use the individual particles i'm going to consider the whole body are we good to make my analysis so classical thermodynamics considers the whole body for analysis or for experiments if i'm considering the human body for an experiment i want to know why we feel cold I want to know why there is heat always in the body then using classical thermodynamic way means i'm going to consider the entire body for my experiment i'm not going to consider the individual particles you know combination of particles forms the body combination of what particles organs tissue cells they form the entire body but classical thermodynamics consider the body as one what about statistical thermodynamics? It uses a more elaborative, that's the microscopic approach, which is based on the average behavior of a large group of what, individual particles. So if I'm using the statistical thermodynamics approach, I'm going to consider what the individual what particles. I want to understand why the human body feels cold or heat using the statistical thermodynamics approach then i have to consider each particle that means i'm going to consider each cell then i'll consider the tissues i'll consider now the organs i'll now consider before the entire body so it started from what individual particles are we good 
So if I have, I want to know the temperature, the behavior of what? Water in this cup. There is water in this cup. I want to know the temperature, make analysis and conduct experiments on the water using statistical thermodynamics. It means that I'm going to what? Consider the particle, the smallest particle each. And you know, that's a lot of work. So throughout this course, we are going to use the word classical thermodynamics. Why? Because we will consider the entire body. So assuming I want to know the heat differences between the water here and the atmosphere, using the classical thermodynamics, I will consider the entire temperature of the water comparing to the what? The atmosphere. But if it is statistical, I'm going to consider the individual particles which is very what? Tedious. So everything, every analysis we are going to make in this course, we are going to use what? The classical way, consider the entire, which is what? The macroscopic approach. So let's watch out for the next episode.